All right, so in this video, we're going to be solving the so-called single number problem. And this problem is stated as we're given an array or a list of integers, and every element in that list appears uh, twice except for one element. And the whole purpose of the algorithm is to find that single element that appears only once. And there's a note here that says the algorithm should have a linear runtime and also should use uh, linear space as well. So we can take a look at an example. So for instance, uh, we might be given a list like this, where we're given a list of 1, 2, 2, 3, and 1. And we see that the 2s appear twice, as do the 1s. And the element in this list that appears single time is the number 3. So our algorithm should output 3. So solving this problem in linear time uh, can be done easily enough. And we can step through sort of an approach for how we would do that. Uh, getting rid of this extra space is a little bit more tricky, or there's a specific trick involved with that. Uh, and we'll take a look at that in a bit. But let's first think about how we can solve this just using uh, linear runtime. So one thing that we can do is we can just loop through this list here, and we can keep track of the number of occurrences that we've seen a particular number in the list. So for instance, for that, we can, we can keep track of these things in, let's say, a dictionary, where the first element in the dictionary would be the element that we're on in the loop, so 1, 2, 2, 3, and 1. And the next element that we can keep track of, and the next thing we can keep track of, is the number of occurrences of that element. So for instance, if we loop through this input list here, at i is equal to 0, we encounter a 1, so 1 and it appears, let's say, one time. The next iteration in the loop, we've got the same one there, but we encounter a two now. So that two appears once. i is equal to two, we see our second two. So we've got one still appearing once, and now two appearing two times. i is equal to three, we get that three now. So I'm just going to copy that. We have this and also now a 3 appearing once. And then in our final uh, iteration of this loop, we have our second occurrence of the 1. And what we can do now that we've looped through the entire list is we can just check the key element uh, and determine which one has a 1. So we're guaranteed that only one of these things appears once. And we just check which one appears once. That happens to be 3. And that gives us our answer. So this particular approach does indeed solve the problem in linear time, but it also uses linear space because we're using this auxiliary data structure to keep track of the uh, number and the number of occurrences that we've seen of that number. So we want to solve this problem by getting rid of this need for this data structure. And what I do want to do is encourage you, if you haven't seen this before, to try, pause the video, and solve it yourself. Um, and otherwise, uh, if you're back with me, then we can see how we can get rid of this constraint for this extra data structure. So the key idea to getting rid of this extra constraint is this XOR function, which operates on, on bits. So XOR is a function. Again, it operates on, let's say, bits, b1 and b2. So we can write out a truth table for the XOR function. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And the truth table corresponding to XOR looks like this. So 0 XOR 0 is 0, 0 XOR 1 is 1, 1 XOR 0 is 1, and 1 XOR 1 is 0. So if I navigate over here to the Python, uh, or to the terminal window and type in Python to get the shell, the XOR function in Python is denoted by the caret, so shift 6 on your keyboard. So for instance, 0 XOR 0 is 0, 0 XOR 1 is 1, and so on. And one thing to note about this XOR function is that whenever we're given uh, inputs of the same type, so for instance, 0, 0, or 1, 1, we get an output of 0. But whenever we get an input to the XOR function that has 0 and then something else, or something and then 0, we get that something else, which in this case is 1. So we're guaranteed that there's two occurrences of everything in this list except for one thing. 
So the key idea is to do a cumulative XOR function on this list of inputs, and by doing that, we'll end up with the element that appears only once. So considering this example here, what we'll end up doing is looping through the list and then performing this cumulative XOR. So it would look something like 1, XOR 2, XOR 2, XOR 3, XOR 1. So what's going to happen is that we have 2 XOR 2, we have two elements of the same that's going to correspond to 0, we have two elements of 1, so that's also, as we know here, going to correspond to 0, and then we have 0 XOR something, right? So anytime we have 0 XOR something or 1 or something x or 0, we get that something as the output to the function. So if we run this command here, we get the odd man out, the 3 in this case. So that is the key idea to solving this, and if I exit out of the Python terminal here, we can go back and solve this problem uh, in a very quick way now that we know the trick. So what we can do is we can say, let's just put in the uh, input list here as nums. We'll put in our example, one, two, three, one. And what we'll do is let's have uh, an answer variable equal to zero. And we'll loop through this list and we'll essentially just perform a cumulative XOR. So for i in range of length of nums, we'll say that answer is equal or XOR equal to nums of i. So if you're not familiar with this notation, it's just a shorthand um, for uh, essentially, let me go back to the Python shell. So it's essentially just a shorthand for, well, I, I guess I can just point to this right here. It's just a shorthand for doing this on the entire list. And so then what we'll do is we'll print out the answer. Let me go back and exit out of this. And if I do an ls, I've got my Python script that I'm writing to right here. And if I run this, I will get the odd man out, which in this case is 3.